And faith clings to the promise. The promise that this good news is for you. What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where on every episode, I am always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. And today, we are talking about good news. <laughs> We're talking about the gospel, but it's the same thing. We're going to talk about the gospel because there have been times where even I've been criticized on this channel that maybe if you would stop criticizing other people and actually preach the gospel. And that got me thinking. And I've gone back and reviewed a lot of those videos where that implication has been made. And believe it or not, I do actually proclaim the gospel in almost every video. And if there's one out there that I haven't, well then shame on me. So we're gonna talk about what is the gospel because it's vitally important that we understand that. And if theology is something that you're interested in and you're new to the channel, then I highly recommend subscribing. Click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and leave me a comment. What are your thoughts? What are your questions? What are your criticisms? All of that in the comment section below. And of course, 1517 Films does have a Facebook page on Facebook, facebook.com slash 1517 Films. So what is the gospel? Well, from the Greek, we know that the gospel, the word gospel means good news. And really, I should just leave it at that. That should be the end of the video. The gospel is good news. But what is that good news? It is the good news that Jesus died for you, he rose for you, and he forgives you all of your sins. You are completely forgiven, and now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's good news. But, Unfortunately, in mainline Christianity, this gospel has been muddled and it will be implied under the pretense that they're actually preaching it or it's flat out denied. So, the gospel implied is the gospel denied. So, let's understand what the gospel is by painting ourselves a little bit, bit of a picture. You live in, 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 in a country, doesn't matter what one, but there's a war, a terrible, terrible war. And it's been raging for long before you were born. This war-torn country that you live in with buildings falling everywhere, bombs dropping out of, the, out of the sky, death and destruction all over the place, poor, impoverished, and cold, and hungry. This is the only life you've ever known. This war is going on forever, and there's no hope. But one day, in the middle of all of this death and destructions, a messenger comes from the battlefield, far off. And he comes and he tells you, the war is over. We won. You're completely free. Good news, right? That's good news. Once he adds, but you have to, it's no longer good news. It's, it's a burdensome work. The gospel isn't a burdensome work. It is simply only good news. And this good news, once it reaches your ears, creates in you a brand new life. The sun seems to shine a little bit brighter. You're emboldened to go out and clean up the destruction and to take care of the sick and the wounded and to feed the hungry and to clothe the naked. Why? Because the war is over and you are free. That's why. And when someone comes to you from your community who hasn't heard and they ask you, why, why are you cleaning up? Why are you rebuilding? Why are you giving what little you have to someone else? What's wrong with you? There's a war on. <sighs> you don't tell them that, well, because the war is over, now the commander commands me to do this. Let me tell you how I was before I found out. No, 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 no. <laughs> 
the only answer you can possibly give when someone who doesn't know looks at you and says, why? You look at them and say, have you not heard? Has no one told you? Let me tell you. The war is over. The commander won. It's over. We're free. And he sent his messenger to come and to tell us that we are free. And now that it's over, what else can we do but this? See how markedly different it is that to tell someone the good news when they're asking you why you're doing something instead of muddying it up and, and talking about how you were before you heard the news and making it all about you. You see, the battle is won. The battle had been raging. Sin, death, and destruction was reigning. But on the cross, in his flesh, the unique Son of God bore your sin. And he drank from the cup of God's wrath all the way down to the dregs for you. He drank all of it. There's none left for you. He did it all. And he did it all for you. And he died. And he rose again from the dead. And now he sends his messenger to you even 2,000 years later. And that messenger picked you up in his arms and spoke God's word to you. And part of that word is, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That is how the good news came to many of us. Others of us were much older when we heard the good news, but when we heard it, we believed. But faith clings to the promise. Remember, the righteous shall live by faith. Not by works, by faith. And faith clings to the promise. The promise that this good news is for you. That's it. That's the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus died for you. And if you're struggling with how do you explain the gospel to someone, use these words. Jesus died and rose again for you. Your sins are forgiven. Don't beat yourself up. Just tell them the truth. Jesus died for them. Their sins are forgiven. Now, if they, like we go back to our picture, if they are in this war-torn, destroyed country where death seems to be reigning supreme, and they hear the good news, but all they can see is the death and destruction around them, and they choose not to believe it. Well, of course, it makes sense. War is all they've ever known, too. Death and destruction is all they've ever known. It's in their nature to only know this. But trust the power of God the Holy Spirit through the Word, through the Bible, through the Word, to cut through bone and marrow and convict the heart. See, Luther wrote in, in I believe it was the Heidelberg Disputation, the law says to do this, but we never do. The gospel, on the other hand, says believe this, and because of Christ, everything, everything is accomplished already. It's done, or as Jesus himself says, it is finished. So we don't despair when in this war-torn country we see the death and desolation, and we look at people who haven't believed the news yet, but we continue to tell them. Because that's our calling, to throw out the seed. But we are not the one that waters or makes it grow. And the seed, well, the, the plant, <laughs> gives credit to the one who threw the seed. And the seed is the gospel. The plant gives credit to the one who watered it and made it grow. The plant claims nothing of its own. It doesn't say, I decided to crawl out of the dirt and face the sun. Just like we don't say, I accepted the commander of the army into my heart and I made a decision for him and now he commands me to do this so I'm doing it and now I'm going to put you under the burden of the law. Aren't you glad I preached the gospel to you? No. The gospel is good news and that good news is that Jesus died for you 
your sins are forgiven. So Christians, why don't we just start preaching the gospel? Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.